Hello everyone, welcome back to Shonky Lab. It is me, Mr. Elton McManus, and I'm here to take you through a journey of moving house. Uh, but I do need two guest producers. Yes, I've brought that back. These are guest producers. Uh, first off, in the left-hand corner, we have Mr. Pete Hammond. Hello. And the other corner, slightly smaller corner, little blue corner, I suppose, is Mr. Lee Harvey. Hello. Hello. You guys all right? Oh, yeah, not too bad, man. How's you? Yeah, not too bad. Well, you, you kind of know how I've been feeling because Skype was being a bit of a twonk earlier well, on. Well, we've so. had 20 minutes of bollocks, haven't we? So. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best bit. I hope you press record. <laughs> Pretty much, yes. It was um, 20 minutes of, indeed, bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Shame. Um, yeah, but we're we're here to talk about moving house. Now, I know um, I'm going to put a question in the chat room. This is either going to work wonderfully well, or it's not going to work at all. So I'm a little bit worried about this. Um, but I'm going to ask a question in the chat room. Chat room, are going to answer it, but we're not going to give away the actual question onto the podcast. Meta? I don't Ooh. know. I, I I never met her, anyway. Um, right, it's in there, okay? So I'm looking forward to people answering that and then us reading it out and then seeing how we go with this. You never know. Um, if you want to, if you're well, you're probably not listening live anyway, um, if you are listening to the podcast and you want to listen live in future, you go over to uh, shonkylab.com and the links are all there to go to the Mixler page. Then you can join us in the chat room, talk with us, uh, chat with us, even call in on Skype as well if you wish to do that. So, so gentlemen, moving house. Yeah, it's, fun yeah. times. Yeah, it's, it's, it's apparently it's the most stressful thing you can do, isn't it? It certainly feels like it at the moment. Mm. <laughs> it does feel like it. Yeah, I've how many? Well, okay, how many times have you guys done it? <laughs> <laughs> um, I. I wrote a list so childish. You know, of the places <laughs> of the places that I've lived and I counted twenty three houses. Fucking hell. Um that's probably not all of them to be honest. I've certainly moved at least once a year for as long as I can remember. Are you the human equivalent of the littlest hobo? Yes. Wow. Pretty much. Uh, uh, do, shall I read the list of places that I've lived? Yeah, go for it. Right, okay, so I started in London. Which ones of these are student, or were you never right. a student? Uh, well, I'll, I'll, I was a student. I'll tell you when the student place comes. So I lived in London, in Glossop, in Derbyshire, Lancaster, Manchester, Maidstone, then Sheffield, where I was a student, then London again, where I was a student for a little bit of the time, and now I'm in Southampton. Are you on some kind of register? <laughs> and to that's, keep moving. <laughs> and that's not including the times when... I was working as an archaeologist and I had a way job, so I was often going away on the Monday, coming back on the Friday into various parts of the country. So, yeah. yeah, I've moved once or twice. And it's a bloody nightmare. Yeah, I imagine it would be. Yeah. If, like I said, I am currently sat in a room which has boxes all over the place because I haven't bothered to unpack from the last time that I moved. <laughs> because, you know, who knows when it will happen again? It could be off again next week. Well, do we ever finish unpacking, though? I think no. I've probably got a box of stuff somewhere that I've still not unpacked from the last time I moved. Yeah, I've, I've, I've got stuff that went straight from my loft into the moving van and then straight to the into loft. Into your new loft. Did it, yeah. did, it, did it have loft written on the I box? I think it did, yeah. <laughs> Is it Christmas decorations and a box of spiders? <laughs> Dead spiders. Yeah. Generally what lives in lofts. Yeah. <laughs> Collect those, put them in the box. Yeah. Um, oh, we, we've had our first um, answer to the question, the mystical question in the chat room. It's from Doreen and she has put nine... And ninety six. Mm. Good, good numbers. Good yeah, numbers. yeah, yeah. It's a solid start. Hey, have you have you got any Lee? Me? Yeah. Um, any yeah, any answers? Twenty three. I'm just trying to remember all of them. Oh wow. Yeah, I'll I'll write them down. I'll come back to you. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So um yeah stuff that doesn't actually get unpacked uh 
Yeah, I did have a box that just said loft in it. Uh, <laughs> that did just go straight to the loft. Is, and... it, is it a loft? Is it like a smaller loft? And in that is a box with a smaller loft. And it just goes on forever. Infinitum. That's the one of lofts. Like the the inception of loft rooms. Yes. Crazy. No, actually, no. Funny enough, no. <laughs> but I once lived with um, a load of film students, and they were thinking about making a film called Loft, which was like Lost, but except they, they were trapped in a loft instead of on an island. Ah. I don't know what ever happened to that. I, I take it it <laughs> never saw the light of day. And it, it sounded interesting. <laughs> okay, well... Um, Mysterious loft full of, um, what do they call, polar bears. And smoke monsters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go down this rabbit hole. Let's open the hatch. Oh, <laughs> fuck, we're in somebody's living room. <laughs> Pete, you're in the process of trying to find a house at the moment, aren't you? I am indeed, yes. I think this this is the basic premise of doing this one, wasn't it? Yeah. The, the fun and games and jolly japes of actually moving house and looking for somewhere. Um, yes. Yeah, we're currently part way through. We're actually, we've just had the survey results back on um, the place we're currently looking at buying. And um, as you can possibly tell by the tone of voice, I'm not very happy about it <laughs> already. So it's going really well. Yeah. I... Well, like Lee said, it is one of the stress, most st- stressful things you can do throughout your whole life. Yeah, um, I mean this this one it's it's not so much the actual moving and all the rest of it. It's the it's the fact that people turn into lying bastards when they're trying to sell their house. Would that um, be the estate agents or the actual people that are selling the house though? Both, both generally speaking. <laughs> Uh, this one, we actually met the woman who's selling the place, and we um, said, so, "Is everything in order?" And she goes, "Oh yes, this boy, this boiler was fitted three years ago, and I've got all the certificates for it. It's all in order, and this, that, and the other." And we got the survey results back today, and it said, "Yeah, no evidence of any safety certificates or whatsoever for electrics, the gas, nothing." And we're just, "Oh, for fuck's sake!" Oh, nice. This this is coming off the back of the previous place that we offered on. Um, we got the survey results back on that and essentially the bits that weren't underwater were on fire and um, if we moved in we'd both have caught AIDS um, wow it was <laughs> really, it was a horrific I mean the house was lovely it's a really nice place but we got the survey result back and I don't know if you've ever if most people should know this I would imagine but when you get your home buyer's report done it lists everything in the house on a scale of one two and three well, right. one is hunky dory. You're fine, brilliant. Don't have to bother. Two is you eh, might want to have a look at this, and three is run the fuck away. Don't <laughs> even bother. And this ha- this place, if it wasn't a two, it was a three. Uh, the only place it scored one was the chimney stack because it didn't have one. <laughs> um, <laughs> the key phrase for me was. Many of the ceiling, many of the roof joists are simply not there, having never been fitted in the first place, and wouldn't even have complied with building regulations at the time of building. Wow. Um, the much of the in, inside insulation and felting to the roof has rotted away because the bathroom extractor fan discharges directly into the roof space. Um, Evidence of DIY wiring in the electrics on the outside of the property. We just oh for fuck's sake! Um, guttering needs replacing. The asbestos roof in the garage probably needs looking at. You just like oh fucking hell! <laughs> so yeah, we pulled out of that one. Yeah, I imagine quite quickly as well. But the worst thing was, I mean, looking back at it, I mean, the alarm bells should have gone off because we found out that the the owner currently lives in New York, but her 21-year-old son lives on his own in the property. And first time we went round, we walked in, and I, I just thought, okay, I could, I thought, what's that smell? Hmm, that's, a, that's an interesting f- smell. That's that's quite a familiar smell. And the estate agent looked at me and said, oh, you've smelt it as well. I said, yeah, I was a student. I know what that smell is. Oh! <laughs> and um, so I was just like, I love fine. that smell, by the way. <laughs> it's lovely, isn't it? <laughs> 
but we, whilst we were looking around the house, the fucker's dealer turned up. Um, <laughs> so that really should have set the alarm bells off. But we were so blinded by this lovely house. It had this lovely lean to it at the back that I could imagine turning into like a barbecue and sort of Hawaiian tiki bar sort of looking place. I, was, I fell in love with it, but no, really not. Um, what was the, it just, uh, describing it as? Was, 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 did they use phrases, you know, like unique opportunity? No, they they were like they were actually pretty straight with it. Actually, they weren't too bad until we asked started asking questions because there were a couple of lights that didn't work in the property. Um, and I said to them because we looked at the house twice. Um, I said, "Are these? Is it just because the light bulbs are gone, or is it the electrics?" And they're like, "Oh no, no, no! It's the bulbs! It's the bulbs!" And you come back on the survey, actually, no, don't turn any of these lights on. They're wired in, wired in funny, and, yeah, they're outside as well. So wow. it, was, it was a little bit kind of... Mm. Like a, a kind of, you know, that game operation where you've got to try and remove bits. At any stage, you could <laughs> press the light bulb and something will explode and yeah, things will go off. The open. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually like buckaroo. Yeah, touch something and something will fly off or fall down. <laughs> really, that ha- that house, I mean, I'm surprised it's still standing, quite frankly. But I think the entire row, because it's a mid-terrace, I think the entire row are all the same. So they're just holding each other up by a sound of it. Say, if, if it's in the mid-terrace, you're all right. It's the ones yeah. you want to worry about. <laughs> but no, that's, that really wasn't good. But then I, I think I'm cursed when it comes to buying houses. Um because way back when, when I bought my very first house back in, ooh, where are we, 2000 and, I think it's 2001, um, me and the girlfriend at the time, we were renting a place in Cambridge, and we thought, well, we want to move, we want to buy our own place, but we can't really afford it. And um, she was looking through the you know local papers and whatever, and we found out that they were doing a mass sale of houses um, at REF Witten. Oh, yeah. Um and basically, this housing company called Annington bought 120 X MOD houses on, on the RAF base. Oh, nice. And they were selling them at, frankly, ridiculously low prices. Um, so we went along to the sales office on, you know, on the civilian part of the base and we said, look, you know, we're, we're interested. We'd like to register our interest. And what's, what's the process? They said, well, it's an auction. There's 120 houses. Uh, of these 120, 60 are earmarked for XMOD personnel. So places 1 to 60 in the queue are sort of reserved. And then after that, anybody can, can join the queue. And we're like, oh, right, what, what, what you, so you mean a queue? So on the day, you come up and you literally stand in line. And you when it comes your turn, you can kind of have a look at the houses. They said, well, essentially, yes, but we advise you to start queuing fairly early. Oh, right, okay, how early is early? And the woman said, yesterday. And said, what? You know, this, the sale's not for another two weeks yet, love. What? What do you mean? She goes, yeah, we're unofficially we are allowing people to camp, and they'd started camping to get these houses. What for? Like when people camp for our iPhones? Literally, yes. Jeez, for yeah. a house. I for suppose. a house. Yeah, it's, it's not yeah, bad. It's I, a house, I, it? I'd rather do it for a house than an iPhone. Well, that's that's exactly what happened next. Because I looked at the girlfriend and she looked at me and we said, well, these houses, because it's the house, the prices that they were listed at are what they were going to go for. And the ones that we liked the look of were 69,950, which back in 2001 was pretty damn good. Mm. So we thought, well, we're going to do quite nicely if we can get one of these houses. So... She looked at me, I looked at her, I said, well, should we do it then? And she said, well, we are booked to go on holiday to Spain in a couple of days. So you can probably see what's coming next. I went home and got my tent, <laughs> and she fucked off to Heathrow <laughs> and went to Spain for two weeks. Whereas I pitched my tent, got number eight in the civilian queue, but I pitched my tent and kind of morphed into an amalgam of Colonel Kurtz from Apocalypse Now and Father Jack. <laughs> um, and I basically, I camped for, um, for the entire duration and uh, we got this house and we, so it's a mid-terrace two-bed house for 69950 
which we promptly sold three years later for 130. Bonus. So we did quite well. Yeah, that's but not that, bad. That kind of set the bar for what I have to do to get a house. Yeah. Um, because we, as I say, we sold that place. We moved to another place in Huntingdon, and then she decided to boot me out. So that was quite nice of her. Um, did she have a nice holiday in Spain? Um. Mm, yes, she did. Well, it's then, the kind, the that's kind good. of holiday, the, the kind of holiday you go on if you don't have a partner. But um, yeah, she had a nice time. <laughs> <laughs> um, whilst Muggins here is sat in a fucking tent in the pissing rain in fucking Huntingdon. <laughs> right. Well, maybe that. But was... you're not bitter, though. Not bitter at all. No, no, not at all. Not not at all bitter. Maybe um, that was the um the chat up line. Maybe it was. Well, where's your other half? Well, he he sat he's, in a tent now. He's at home in the tent, pissed out of his tiny little mind to try and cope with the boredom. Yeah. Because to because most people that were queuing as well, I forgot to add this. Most people that were queuing were couples or families. So one person so they, could be. In... They didn't mind the. Um drunk in the corner the drunk father jack yeah in the middle funny. of all these families yeah Feck. <laughs> girls <Back off. laughs> knickers because you have to stay and this is this is the kicker you have to stay one of you somebody had to man your tent for 22 out of 24 hours how did they check was it oh, like, they checked they'd was literally it like in, up and... those war films and they're walking past the shining torches in your face yeah Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so if you've got a family of four, you can take it in turns. But if it's just you on your own, it's not much fun. <laughs> 22 out of 24 hours. Flipping yeah. hell. I went for that must have honked in there. It was, it, was, it was awful. I mean, they did open. There were three houses that they'd kind of opened. Like, so you could use the toilets and the showers and stuff. But yeah, that was not a fun couple of weeks. That was fairly nightmarish. <laughs> I've I've got some answers in the chat room for us for our uh, mystery question that we've been asking uh, through through Mixler. Uh, first off, we have a Mister Lee Harvey. <laughs> we're, we're, Ooh. We're here, Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's put um fifty six, thirty seven, nine, thirteen, and one seven two a. Hmm. We also have uh, Drew Barker. Hello, Drew. He has said 11 and 16, A. Eh? And then we get to Mr. Jim Moon. Are you ready for this? I think he's lived in more than you, maybe. We'll see. Mm. Uh, 30... uh, they're, the, they're the only ones I can remember. There's loads more. 3, 50, 4, 7, 6, 2, 7, 2, 21, 52, 9, 8. Wow. And then Gaz follows up with 8, 15, uh, 120, and 7. So, well done to you guys. <laughs> Everyone's a winner. Yeah. Or loser. Or just... No one knows. Yeah. Maybe we we'll won't be playing this game. <laughs> there we go. I don't know. It's going well. Keep it up. <laughs> It's not the winning, it's the taking part. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, when you said about the, the smell in this um, student's house that you, you said that you, you was going to look at, uh, I, when me and Amanda were looking at our first house, we, we were looking around Plumstead, and we found a house which, which we eventually bought, but it always smelled of um, like the can air fresheners every single time we went there. That's always a good sign. Well, it it smelled <laughs> quite pleasant. We was like, oh, that's that's all right, isn't it? Did and, it did it have the um the Glade plugins knocking around? Yes, you know, that, that give out the smell every now and then because that's that's normal, isn't it? But if it was like half a can had been emptied as you walked through the door, that's when you want to start worrying. It had the Glade plugins, and it, it you could almost see the mist inside. Just, just one of them, one of them per plug, not like an extension plug with eight of them in. <laughs> Yeah, you didn't go into the second bedroom. There's loads of cru- no, loads of magic trees <laughs> hanging off the ceiling. No, no, there were, <laughs> there were no magic trees. But what we worked out once we actually moved into this house, we um we got the well Amanda got the keys and entered the house, and I walked in there before we moved any of our stuff in because it was before we'd we were all gathering our 
stuff together so we would put them into one house so it's just a case of bringing it from our parents houses into that house so there was no removals around to worry about so we had to wander around the house and all of a sudden this smell hit us and it turns out his dog stunk and he was trying to cover up the musty smell of his, of his dog Ooh, um, that's not good. <laughs> it, it was one of them dogs it was a lovely dog but you, you kind of got a greasy hand every time you stroked him. <laughs> and I, it didn't click until we would bought the house and moved into the house and took everyone around the house and everyone was going, it's really nice. It smells a bit though, doesn't it? <laughs> so that took a, a couple of bottles of the shaken vac to get rid of that stuff. All of the Ooh. Febreze in Plumstead. <laughs> yeah, it certainly was, yeah. <laughs> All two bottles of it. Yeah, and uh, I'm pretty sure half the light bulbs were missing as well. Because I didn't know people actually did that. Oh, people do that. People do that, yeah. People take bulbs, and if it's not written on there, they can also take floorboards as well. Yeah, really? they'll take it, take anything they can. I've re- I've rented, um, I mean, the flat I'm in at the moment, I rented it out for six, for six months on a contract, and they basically, if it wasn't nailed down, they nicked it. Hmm. It was fucking disgusting. I just, basically, this is why I hate people. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was when, when we bought this house, it was written on an itinerary of what is staying and what is going, and nothing about light bulbs or anything like that. And it's because you generally tend to think that our oh, people aren't that cheap. Oh, fuck me, they are. <laughs> yeah. When I moved out of a flat in London, actually, the landlady said, you know, what? Because she lived in South Africa, so it was all communicated via emails. And she was like, well, what's the problem? You know, are there any problems or anything that you need to take off the deposit? And I was like, not really. There's, you know, a couple of light bulbs um, are not working. And she wanted to charge me for that. She wanted to charge me for the replacement of the light bulbs. <laughs> it's like, really? It's, what, £1.40, something like that? It never went through. The, the um, state agents laughed at them. Good. Yeah. But then again, you could question it. Well, when you got the house, were the light bulbs working? <laughs> yes, they right. were. Yeah, it's it is completely my fault. But, well, yeah, you have actually used yeah, these light we were, bulbs. You've worn we them out. We were cooking with these yeah. light bulbs, <laughs> just holding <laughs> stews and things up to them. The light bulb went a week after I moved in. I've not changed it. It's sat in the dark. The <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, it, it was London, so you can either pay your rent. Or have your heating. Or your electric. Yeah. You can't do both. Yeah. So, have you found anything when you've moved into these houses? When Pitch. I say that, have you found any trinkets or anything left in the loft, like pornography or anything Please. like that? No, no, no. You'll like this. Right. When I lived in Tooting, there was a guy, he was South African as well, actually, but he was very, very, very strange. I won't go into the details of why he was strange. Just trust me that he was strange. He, when he moved out, we went upstairs to have his bigger room. And there was loads of furniture and things that he left behind. And it was really good. And we were moving everything around. And, you know, you can get those corner shelves. Yeah. And so they go into, you know, go into the corner bookshelf and whatever. And it, has, it doesn't go right up to the corners. It's quite flat at the back. When we moved it out, there was just a big kitchen knife <laughs> lying on the ground. Ooh. He, w- he would have had to have placed it there there's no reason because these were quite high bookshelves they were almost up to the ceiling Yeah. there's no reason why there should be a massive kitchen knife <laughs> <laughs> at the back of these, these things and we lived with this guy for about a year he oh, was nuts. he was weird Christ he didn't have like secret peep holes or anything like that did he drilling holes in the floor with he... something he, he used to um he used to make moves towards one of the other um females in the house and my girlfriend at the time actually she said that he um crept up on her when they were walking back at, in the evening like he not together they've been on the same tube or something and he he like grabbed her and went boo or something like that and said oh you should watch where you're going i could have raped you and you're like what <laughs> you what yeah. I could have, but I, I, this guy mm, was properly weird. I'm getting creeped out now. I wish I'd drawn the <laughs> curtains. That is freaky, man. 
that's the, that's what sharing houses in London is like. Oh no, no, thank you. Weird guy. Honestly, a massive kitchen knife. I just threw it away. Right. Well, I didn't want to go to the police and say because <laughs> he 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 ran a um like a bouncers thing uh, company and was always off uh, telling us about how he had to go out and help do this and help break up something and you know he was always saying about how hard he was and how he could get people shot and weird oh god yeah oh, good lord very very strange person mm. Gaz That's... in the chat room says uh, the toilet seat is also on the itinerary so whether or not the, the toilet seat will still be there when you buy your next house that yeah that's on the itinerary so with the light bulbs uh, probably curtains as well toilet seat my to- my tenants nicked the toilet seat as well did they yeah they were cunts though <laughs> what would you do with a toilet seat it's just it's because people are bastards it's just to piss you off I think it's not, <laughs> that's all it is that's why, would, why else would you nick a light bulb yeah well you can use that you might not be able to if it's a, if it's a screw fitting and you've nicked a bayonet. That's true. They should really do their research before they exactly. move out. Exactly. So it's just to piss you off. That's or maybe their next house <laughs> didn't have a toilet seat. In a way, that's your fault for not putting it down on the itinerary. It was down on the itinerary. Do you know, oh, right. if, if, we, <laughs> <laughs> if we all stop nicking toilet seats, then There'll there's no need to take a toilet before. seat. Yeah. I've never stolen a toilet seat. That is a sentence I didn't think I'd say today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the house that me and Amanda... I did not admit to not having stolen toilet seats. I, I, I have never stolen a toilet Why would I want to steal a toilet seat? There is no need to steal a toilet seat. If I move into a house, the question is, that toilet seat's staying, isn't it? And if the, it comes back, well, it's staying, isn't it? Yes, it's staying. Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, the house me and Amanda moved the into. Last thirty seconds of this, my speakers cut out for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got like a mute button? I I haven't so got. A... Shut him up now, quick! Press the mute. <laughs> <laughs> I can if you want. That, that's that's fine. I've got no problems in that. Um, the house me and Amanda first moved into in Plumstead. Uh, I think it was maybe a year after we moved in. We stripped the walls in the hallway. And behind the old wood chip uh, wallpaper that was on the on the walls were three paintings. Now they weren't paintings you'd hang up. These were actually painted onto the plaster. Oh, like a mural. Kind of, yeah. But they not they like, weren't not like the Madonna with the big boobies. Not that kind of thing. Not no. Just think, hidden away. Think of a Banksy. <laughs> like a stencil thing. No, it wasn't. No, this this was hand painted. I've still got photos of it, and I'll I'll put them in the the group at a later time when I can find them. Was it like them French cave paintings? Um, <laughs> Didn't Neanderthal man had done them? It, no, it the, is the, Essex. <laughs> no, no, of, the, of wildebeest with arrows <laughs> in them. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it is Essex. <laughs> no, this was down in London at the time, and uh, they were probably about four inches by six inches i suppose and there are pictures of clavelli now the weird thing that <laughs> right have you ever been to clavelli yeah and it's got all the the weird um very steep hill cobbled hills yeah <laughs> the weird what? thing right the weird thing is we'd or just booked a holiday to go to Calvetti. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I reckon this is Amanda would take the piss. <laughs> it's proper creepy. I remember yeah, well, have a look off. at this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was proper creepy. <laughs> but oh, can you can you imagine if you looked at the picture and looked up really close and there waving back at you was a picture of you and your family. <laughs> <laughs> they just <laughs> How weird would that be? That would be... I'm glad you moved. Incredibly weird, yeah. yeah. I'm you thinking to, about that now. look at those pictures and you need to zoom in and have a look. Just staring out of the window of a hotel. There's Elton. Hello. <laughs> There's a little baldy head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, point, pointing up in disbelief as it can see the face looking down at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no more cheese before bed. Moonlight glinting off of me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. First nights in houses. Now, I've always... I I kind of like waking up in a different house or not knowing where I'm waking up in. When I stay around the mother-in-laws, when we all go around there, and you wake up in the morning and you you have that split second of, I don't know where I am when you, <laughs> when you wake up. I, I love that feeling. And it's always weird. I, I always lay in bed giggling to myself that we're in the new house. Like, we own this. What the hell? <laughs> Because <laughs> you have to get used to it, don't you? I always yeah. worry I'm going to piss in the wardrobe, and only about sixty percent of the time I do. Oh, that... <laughs> it's good, good, good numbers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you do get excited, though, you know. As as long as it uh, it is stressful to move house, of course. But once you've done it, that's kind of exciting, though, isn't it? Once everything's it... finished, and you still got one pack, but or, you, or not, as the case may be. Mm. But, but yeah, you're right. Waking up in a new place and like the the idea of where are you going to put everything, how's everything going to be organised as a new place. Yeah, it's good. It's for me, it's kind of like going on holiday. I don't get excited until I'm actually sitting on the aeroplane, and I'm yeah. kind of the same with moving house. It's not actually happened until I've actually slept in the bed in the new place, and at that point, I go, "Yes, it's happening! Brilliant!" Yeah. And that's the most possible possible amount of time before another move yeah yes. that first night <laughs> yeah yes yeah, it's, it's true but i get i still get anxious i get anxious about absolutely everything anyway um even up to the point of actually going out and i'll sit there and go okay i don't really want to go on holiday i don't really want to go see this gig i don't really want to go see this movie but once you're doing it i'm fine and that call when we first got the keys for our first house, uh, Amanda was really excited, all giggly and bubbly and everything. And she goes, no, 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 we, we, we got keys. We can move in. Brilliant. And my heart was like, oh, my God, what are we doing? What are we doing? So much money. Can we afford this? I don't know. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everything I'm starts kind, sinking in. I'm kind of the same, but then I'm, I'm in the same thing. I'm like... I'm, yes, I've got the keys in hand. I'm not excited about it because I could get run over on the way there. Yeah. <laughs> I that's might very, die. That's very specific. <laughs> but, but then it won't be your problem, will it? It might actually happen, though. <laughs> <laughs> it will happen. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. It will it'll probably <laughs> happen in the next cheerful. few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah, about... we've got it. Uh, sniper. What about <laughs> viewing houses? Oh... Yeah, that's my personal favourite at the moment. Go on, and what what have you got on viewing houses? All right, as I say, we've just we've as I say we're in the process of buying this place, so we have had the fun and games of looking at houses. And first of all, there's there's always the thing you go into go into your um, estate agent, you say, "Hello, yes, I'm looking for a house, or what sort of thing you're looking for?" Well, I'm looking for a two bedroom house. Maximum budget of 160. All oh, right, sir, that's great. Yes, mm, yes, yes. Well, here's a free bedroom house for 185. <laughs> Don't be a dick. <laughs> I've I actually one estate agent agent did that to me um, a couple of years ago when I was looking for the place I'm in at the moment, and I just walked out the door just like, Don't be a cock. Um, <laughs> but no, the, at the moment we've got um, well. In the area that we're li- we, the area we were looking, we were very specific budget, and there wasn't an awful lot coming on the market in our budget range because we had a maximum of about one hundred and seventy grand to play with. And we were looking for a two bed sort of place, and you know all this sort of that sort of thing. So we said, right, this is what we want. Don't try and fart about and say, oh, this is one hundred and eighty because we're not in- we're not interested. We won't look. So right, okay, fine. Well, there's, there's this one. This this one you'll like. This it's a two. It's a one bedroom, maze in there, um, got a garage and all the rest of it. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, great. We'll have a look at that one. Then. If, if it's nice, it's an area we like the look of. We'll have a look. So, brilliant. So, they said it is currently tenanted. Okay. Which was a phrase that would become the bane of my existence. <laughs> 
because currently tenanted, this is a new thing because this is the first time I've looked to buy a house in eight years. Yeah. And in the in the intervening eight years, selling, owning a house that you you know the buy to rent market has obviously exploded. Um, so you can sell your house with your current tenants in it. I didn't know this was a thing, but apparently do, it is. Do you get them as well? Yes. So you buy the house, but they're living in it. But do you own them? Yeah. I. I if I could sell them for slavery or for <laughs> vivisection, I fucking well would. Because, <laughs> again, we're going back to the, the Pete Hammond theory of people are cunts. Because, um, as I say, long story short, on this first one, we went round, the current tenants were in there, and they followed us, and they glared at us the whole time we were there. It made us feel very, very uncomfortable. You can't blame them, though. Their house has been sold from yeah. underneath well, them. Well, that's the, that's the thing. Hopeless, you bastard. Yeah, that... shame on you. Fuck them. I just care. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> Fuck them in the eye. <laughs> and I'll, I'll do it again, I tell you. Um, but no, what they, what they should basically say is, this one's currently tenanted. Are you buying to rent? No, I'm buying to live in it. In that case, don't look at this one then, sir. So... We had that one. Then we had another one. Um, again, this is one. Uh, this is in Huntingdon. Um, this one was a free bedroom house on one hundred and sixty-five thousand pounds. Currently tenanted. Well, right. Okay. Fine. Um, we'll give it a go. We got there. The place was a fucking dive. The current tenants were employing a employing a um, a, a tactic known as make the place look shit to put the people off. Ah, uh, now Gaz has put that in the chat room. He has said, uh, what, what does he say? Um, I don't get why people don't clean up uh, when viewings are happening. Oh, no. It, it, I, I can completely understand why these people did it. Oh, yeah. Because they, they basically, they don't want to move out. They're, they're renting this house that the landlord is selling from under them, which I can understand completely is a pretty shitty thing to do on the landlord's part. But it's also, you know, I'm, I'm trying to buy somewhere to live. So... I kind of want to look at a nice, decent place. And we, we went to this one house. We were a little bit late because we couldn't find it. And we got there, and the, the estate agent was there, stood on the doorstep. She goes, oh, a little bit, little bit um, late, but don't worry. She goes, no, 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 I've been knocking. There's nobody in. So she rung the door, doorbell again and knocked on the door. No answer. Right, open the door. Right, step in. Hello, Thomas Morris. We're here to look around the house, blah, blah, blah. No, no, uh, no response. Great, right. Okay, well, here's the kitchen. Look in there, and there was washing up and unprepared food on the side and thinking right okay this isn't great yeah uh went into the living room which was a fucking tip it's awful um we then came out into the hallway started going up the stairs and this bloke appeared at the top of the stairs what the fucking hell do you want um we're looking around the house with a view to buying it well nobody told us and the poor estate agent was so embarrassed yeah. She goes, well, I was knocking on the door for 10 minutes and I did shout up, we never fucking heard you. <laughs> and we're like, oh, for fuck's sake. Well, do you mind if we have a look around? <laughs> right, well, this is the main bedroom. Don't go in there, somebody asleep. Right, that's it, we're going. Fuck you, we're off. So we just walked out. Um, estate agent followed us and said, uh, well then, uh, we'll call you during the week to get your feedback, because you can have our fe fucking feedback now, love. <laughs> Answers no, yeah. She went, um, <laughs> okay, well, what did you reckon to it? I said, well, I was first put off by the overflowing jam jar of fag ends on the front doorstep. <laughs> she goes, yeah, you saw that, did you? I said, yes, I fucking did. That's um, a, a unique modern art sculpture. Yeah, it was... That's it was the an, value of the house. It was a work in progress as well, by the looks of it. <laughs> um, that's constant art. It's an yes. <laughs> and then we... So we, we sacked that one off. Um, and then we looked at another one. And it just come on the market. It was coming on on the Monday. And they said, we, we can show you around on the Saturday because obviously you, you've been looking with us before and stuff. So he, he's just put it on the market. It's um, it's all re newly decorated. Oh, great. That's nice. That'll do. Thinking, you know, newly decorated to sell your house. It's all going to be white and magnolia. It's going to look really good. So we go mm. in there and he hadn't touched the front room in a good couple of decades I'd say and uh, I thought well this doesn't look very recently decorated unless he's you know life on Mars um, 
And then uh, we went into the kitchen and he said, and the vendor was there as well as the estate agent. And he was very pleased with the, the redecoration job he'd done in the kitchen. Um, as I say, if you're going to redecorate the place to sell, you choose magnolia, white, you know, sort of neutral tones. No, he'd gone for the biggest bucket of turquoise paint he could find. <laughs> And he'd done the walls and the cupboards. Oh, no. <laughs> I was coming off the back of a fairly hefty concussion through playing rugby. I couldn't tell where the cupboard started and the walls <laughs> finished. I was having real issues, and I was just like, oh, I can't be doing with this. this that would give me a migraine. It was, oh, I genuinely couldn't tell where what was what in there. It would give me a headache, and I was just like, no, fuck this. So that was a no. And we went straight from that one, because we booked like, four or five bookings in one day. We went straight from that one into the House of Wonders. And we we went in, and usual drill, knock on the door. This one was tenanted as well. And uh, we went in, and the place was a pigsty. It was astonishing, the amount of crap that was just strewn everywhere. So we're right, okay, well, it's, if you ignore the rubbish everywhere, it's not too bad, right? Let's have a look in the kitchen. And they'd built an extension in the kitchen, but they hadn't taken down the internal wall. So you had the the external wall. So if you had the back wall of the house and then you had the extension beyond it. So you still had a double glazed window. <laughs> did in you the have wall. did you have pebble dashing inside the house as well? Yes. Excellent. <laughs> and even better, the back door was still the back door. And then you had the extension beyond. So you had two essentially two back doors. But the dining room table and everything was on the original inside of the house, along with the sink, but the oven was in the extension. <laughs> this is technically outside. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just sort of, at that point, I was just like, right, well, I, we're not interested, but let's have a look around the rest of the house and see what would, the fuck else they've done. It would be nice and it. warm in, your, in the winter in your extension. It would be lovely and warm, though. Yeah, if, especially if you're cooking a roast. Exactly, and, yes. um, <laughs> <laughs> But then... Uh, this this was one house, and it, it slipped my mind at the time, but the wife had um, got a little bit excited because it had a downstairs loo, as well as a you know, bathroom. So I thought, well, we can't figure out where the loo was. Anyway, never mind. So we're in the kitchen, next to the sink, next to the dining room table, and there's a door. And I'm thinking, oh, what's in this cupboard? Oh, it's the downstairs bog. So literally off the kitchen, straight into the bog. <laughs> Which could make for an interesting Christmas dinner, I suppose. Yeah, that's not great, is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we, we went up the stairs and sort of went into the bathroom. And that was, yeah, it wasn't too bad. You know, standard sort of bathroom, could have done with a clean. And then, and I do apologise now for any listeners who are of a nervous disposition, we opened the main bedroom door. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> to find the current tenant... Enjoying super happy fun time. <laughs> what, he was playing Mario Kart? Playing Mario something. Um, <laughs> hunched over his laptop. <laughs> Listening making... to the Zonky Lab, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the Mixler. In the Mixler. <laughs> Have we got a user in there? Have we got a user in the chat called Beast with One Back? Um, <laughs> essentially, this man was just masturbating furiously whilst we were looking around his house. And we're just like, all right, can we go now, please? <laughs> he wasn't with a lady friend. It was just a computer. No, he was having a wank. Oh, my word. He was having a wank in the main Good on room. him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well done, him. Yeah. Don't shake his hand on the way out, though. Christ. No, we'll just, I just looked at the estate agent and said, I think this one's a no, isn't it? And he went, yep. <laughs> so off we went. And that was that one. Uh, well, you could you could kind of go up to him and say, okay, I want 50 grand off of it. And he'll be caught in the predicament. <laughs> yes! Oh. <laughs> no, I don't want to say yes. No, yes. No! No! no. <laughs> but, uh, yes, yeah, so that was that one. But my my absolute favourite, and this... I, 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 oh, yes. Oh, yes, there's more. <laughs> Where, were the, all these in the same part of the country? This is all in Huntingdon. This is all in the past month. Oh, wow. Yeah. And we found we found this other one. It's a two bed maisonette, and we thought, okay, we'll have a look at it, see what it's like. And we said, well, can we come round at um, at half past four on the Saturday? And they said, no, uh, we'll be in. So come round at four o'clock when we'll be out. All right, fine, fair enough. 
So we meet the estate agent there at four o'clock and she does the usual knock on the door before letting herself in and um, knocked on the door and the tenants opened the door. So, right, okay. This is immediately starting to sound a little bit like a setup, mm. as in, let's make it difficult for the potential buyer by making the place seem like a shithole. Now, as I say, it's a two bed maisonette. We went up into the living room and there were four adults. <laughs> Was um, there a bowl with keys anywhere? <laughs> <laughs> no, worse. Now, th- this is worse. What, I... <laughs> what can be worse? Oh, th- this is the one that I preempted you on on Messenger the other day, Elton. Um, for for people that don't know me, um, I have a very strange phobia, and it's most people. It's spiders. It's snakes. It's sharks. For me, and I'm I'm fully aware of how politically incorrect this does seem but I have a genuine phobia of the um, permanently befuddled, shall we say. Um, it just scares me. I, I, it, I, it panics me. I don't know why. It's, I, know, I feel bad for it, but it, it happens. Anyway, one of the, um, one of the four adults um, had Down syndrome, and I, it terrified me. I, it was really weird. I, I know it's bad, but, um, but yes. But that wasn't the worst thing. The worst thing was they clearly had set this up to make it awkward for us to look around as I say four adults in a two bed maisonette yeah and we went to the main bedroom and we're about to go in when there was a shout from the living room um, of the um, current tenants shouting be careful with there there's somebody asleep in there (laughs) bearing in mind it's half past four in the afternoon Um, on cue and I wish I was making this up Somebody standing the other side of the door started going. It's <laughs> <laughs> not winning any Oscars for this, I think. <laughs> no, and we, I just looked at the estate agent. And I said, "I've just if any any other houses come up on the market and this says currently tenanted, we don't care. We don't want to know." <laughs> no. <laughs> Say, were you still using the same estate agents by this point? This was four. <laughs> four, we were currently we were using about four or five in the area. Two of them were with the same one. I say uh, the blue room and the wanking room. They were with the with the same estate agent, but the others are, are, are different ones. That's but, amazing. Um, but the knock on from this one and this astonished me is the following Saturday. I was doing our weekly Tesco shop, and I was very aware of a woman look staring at me. I said, this is freaking me out a little bit. And in the end, she, wherever I went, this woman stare, was staring at me. She was there. And I just said, look, I've caught you staring at me a couple of times. Do you know me from somewhere? What, what's, what is the issue? Are my flies undone? Have I got toilet paper hanging out of the back of my trousers? What's, what's up? And she goes, I know you from somewhere. I really know you from somewhere. I, thought, I really recognize you. And I looked at her and I thought, I looked around your house last weekend <laughs> she goes, oh yeah, that's it. I knew I recognised you from somewhere. Yeah, fucking bastards trying to sell the fucking flat out from under us. <laughs> fucking, and I'm just like, whoa, Alan, call your jets out, love. Fucking you know, hell, and people like you think you can fucking come in bloody whenever you want. And I'm thinking, you changed the fucking time from when we could come. <laughs> and she started effing and Jeff and carrying on at me, and really giving it some. And at one point, <laughs> I, 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 I was past giving a fuck at this point, so I just. And I'm not a small bloke, as I say, shaved dead, tattoos, built like a brick shit out. So I just went, why don't you just fuck off? And took my voice in the middle of Tesco's. And she she did. Because um, <laughs> I just had enough. I just thought, you do not go up to somebody like that and just ball them out for essentially trying to buy a house. Elton? Yeah? If I've learned anything from this evening, it's that Huntingdon is full of weirdos. Oh, fuck me, is it ever? It's awful. <laughs> I wouldn't even consider it. I wouldn't even consider it. It's no. I mean, we, we're now, I mean, the other place that was that we were going to catch AIDS from if we were going to live there, that was in a place called War Boys, uh, which is a little village a bit further out. This other one that we're, we're currently umming, umming and ahhing over... Um, is in Upward, which is another RAF base. It's a World War Two bomber pathfinder unit. But um, no, 
I, I refuse to live in Huntington now. <laughs> I've, I've had enough. <laughs> I mean, the flat where I am at the moment, we've got, we're currently going through, and I can say this now because it's, it's all been and done with, actually. Um, we had a case of um, a bloke, one of the tenants who's now moved out, where he, he was evicted, really liked the look of another of the tenants' sat navs and offered him £40. And the man whose sat nav it was said, No, I like my sat nav. It tells me where to go and stuff. So the original, so the, the guy that wanted the sat nav broke into the guy's car and stole the sat nav. Oh, God. Wow. The guy whose car it was phoned the police. Hello, my sat nav. My car has been broken into. Um, some things have been stolen. He was so drunk when he phoned up because he's a massive pisshead. He was so drunk when he phoned the police. He gave the wrong address. Can you guess which address he gave? Yes, ladies and gentlemen. He gave the address of the bloke who broke into his car. Yeah. So the police, when they were coming round to get witness statements, because I'm a director of the Residents Association here, they came round to get a statement off of me, and the guy was so confused. He said, we don't know what's going on here, mate. Apparently the bloke broke into his own car to to steal somebody else's sat nav or something. We don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I want to move out of Huntington as soon as I fucking can. Yeah, don't blame you. <laughs> uh, Lee, right, we've got, we got eight minutes. Have you got yeah. any um, tales of viewing um, houses? Well, I, I've i never actually owned my own house, so I'm a completely rental. I'm the kind of person that uh, Pete would kick out of their house and leave them homeless <laughs> <laughs> just because he wants an extension with an oven in it. But, um, <laughs> Look, so we all need I've somewhere a- to wank. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've actually been interviewed to move into a house. Interviewed oh, to that's what? weird. What, what does because, that mean? Because obviously, if you go in to share a place, there was a couple in there already, and another couple were moving out, and they wanted um, another couple to move in. So, as well as actually going to have a look at the place, we were essentially interviewed. We had to sit there with them for like an hour and chat about stuff and talk about these things. We, we almost went to the pub with these complete strangers. Kind of like a sort of um, housing speed date, almost. Mm. I thought that was standard. Well, maybe I'm wrong. It's, I, it's it's just, a... Where I'm at now is uh, there's a landlord who owns a place, and he he operates it. He's not really that bothered who goes in and out. I think in this case, because it was their house, they wanted to know who was who was coming in. If that makes sense. Yeah, so it... now I don't even know the names of half of the people that live in this house because I've not met them yet. Um, but then it only concerns me and my one room. Right. Because um, I, I certainly in spaced. <laughs> using <it. laughs> but they're interviewed. And what's that fucking film with Ewan McGregor in it? Before Train Spotting. Ne- Shallow Grave. Right. I've never been interviewed before like That's that. That's weird. Oh, I, I kind of oh, okay. Well, obviously, you go in and you talk to people, and they, you have a little chat. I'm talking about like a proper hour-long, serious sit down and facing you and talking to you. And this is just to rent a house, it's just to live in the place. Yeah, because I, they... I can't blame people from doing that nowadays because they probably end up with their houses turned over, something rotten. Yeah, I was. I was they're going to live. They were living there as well. So they wanted to know who was coming in, which is fair enough. But it was just the the very official way of doing it that was I found very 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 strange. Mm. I wish that because as I say, I, I rented this flat out for a brief period. I wish I'd had the inter- the time to interview the people that are going to be renting off me. Yeah. Genuinely, because I would never have rented to them. Although we were not asked about the toilet seats. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Will it you wasn't be bringing? Like quest- yeah, question number one. Do you have your own toilet seat? Yeah. Question number two: Are you a dick? <laughs> <laughs> Do you, will you be bringing your own bulbs? <laughs> what wattage will these bulbs be? be? Are they screw cap or bayonet? Because yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not changing the fittings to suit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, right. But most most of the places I've moved into have either been either been um, you, you go around with the landlord. And there's no one else there. Or the landlord's not that bothered because it's only the one little space. 
So yeah, it was weird. Yeah, I, I honestly can't blame people from doing that. My sister-in-law owned a Which house, is? and uh, she ended up renting out her house when they moved. So they kept their old house, bought a new house, and then rented out the old one. Yeah, that's what I did. And uh, in the end, she said it just wasn't worth the hassle because of the grief that went through. Even trying to get the people out before she <laughs> sold the house underneath them. Yeah, she, I, she, I know she wanted that. them to find a house before she sold it. <laughs> and it was just the grief of waiting for them to find it because they're they're in no ha- hurry. They're quite happy just sitting in their nice house. Yeah. But you can give notice though, can't you? Yeah, yes, you, you can. And and you know it's legally binding. They have to go. I don't know when people come become squatters. I don't know how that works. I don't know the law on squatting or anything like that. I've I've never had to deal with it. I'm, I'm sure as soon as I have to deal with it, then I'd know everything about it. <laughs> I think the way that mine was done, I, I they were on a minimum six month contract, and then after that, I could either evict them on the six months, or after that, I had to give them a month's notice, mm. and I evicted them the second I could. Right, because they were uh, phenomenal bastards. <laughs> but um, the, the idea of interviewing people doesn't. It doesn't really always work because obviously we spent time when I moved into the house with the guy who was weird. He seemed very nice. <laughs> I'm That's sure they all get, do. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, we're at 57 minutes at the moment. I'm going to wrap it up. We're going to come back for a part two. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, sure. Good. Because I've, I've got some stories. Def- definitely. I don't think Pete's finished yet. I'm sure he's got loads of stories, and don't worry, I won't be purchasing a house off of him at any point in my life, whatsoever. Well, certainly not going for a viewing with him. No, no What's way. this on the wall? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, yeah. it's so, a picture of Elton. It's a picture of Elton on holiday. Oh, <laughs> my God. <word>. <laughs> I will be putting them photos up in the Junkie Lab at some point. Um, so the people listening to this on the podcast will be joining you in around about 30 seconds. So don't worry. Um, we we won't be going anywhere. People in Mixler will have a 15-minute wee break. We'll synchronise our watches and we'll be back as soon as we can. So uh, tatty bye for now and uh, we'll see you very, very soon. I'm sat here watching um, Fast and Furious 6 with the sound off. Oh, bless you. And it it's improved it, but I still get, get, get the giggles at that Mark II Escort. I don't ruin really it for me. I haven't seen it yet. There, there was a blue Mark II Escort in Fast and Furious 6. It cracks me up. Mark II? Okay. Has it got fog lights on the front? It has. It's blue and it's got racing. It's got white racing stripes. It's so funny. Has it got pe- everybody, else is, everybody else is driving around in big American muscle cars, your Camaros, your all this, that, and the other Mustang. There's a fucking Escort. It's hilarious. <laughs> what wheels has it got? Has it got a pim- pimped up one, though? Oh, it's pimped up, yeah. It's, yeah. Not, it's not a rough bucket, but it's, <laughs> it's definitely a Mark II Escort. It's so funny. It hasn't got the Pepper Pot wheels on it, has it? No, it's it's not on screen. The Rock's on screen at the moment. The Rock, yes. I'll watch anything with him in it. Can you smell? Carry on. Right, okay. We're, we're going <laughs> to carry on with what we're supposed to be talking about. Um... Does he have to rent his elbows out? Because it's the people's elbows, isn't it? So what if he wants to do stuff with them? The well, rock, sorry, carry on. The rock rent his elbows out? Yeah, because it's the, the people's elbow, isn't it? His special move. Or did I make that up? I don't know. Yeah, but it, it's just it's like in North Korea, you know, you just share it. <laughs> so if it I want some want. cleaning done, I want a bit of elbow grease doing. Yeah. Here, Dwayne, come around here. Book in, yeah. <laughs> first, first come, first serve, I think. I, I might honestly dreamt... don't know what is going on now. I might if it, dreamt if that. it wasn't the people's elbow, then it would be a pri- in private hands, and you'd have to pay more for it. But you wouldn't be able to have your right elbow in your right hand because you right. can't do Stop that. Right, stop this. Stop <laughs> this. That's it. No more. Welcome back, everyone, to the Shonky Lab. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, hopefully you haven't heard what's just been said, because flip it out. I, I do not know what's going on. I'm Elton. I'm joined here with Lee. Hiya. And Pete. Hello. And we're talking about moving house. Are we supposed to be talking about moving house? Um, 
So what we, I really can... want to know though was the Rock's signature move the people's elbow? That's going to bug me now. I, I think it was. I'm fairly certain it was. Oh, 99% sure it was. Well, actually, you've given me a subtopic for next episode. Rock, uh, not not the Rock, wrestler wrestlers' sig- uh, signature moves. I think. Can when we I... all have our own signature moves? There you go. Oh, it's it's evolving this straight away. Next, next week's show. Yeah. This week. I'm giving out signature moves. Can I have crushing disappointment? Only if you're in the <laughs> chat room. <laughs> Not now. Anyway, moving house. Furious wank. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. If you need me to dish that out to you, dearie me. I do not want you dishing out furious wanks. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> I'm fairly positive. You f- oh, fairly. <laughs> fairly. <laughs> Explosive flatulence. Yeah, that kind of thing. Right, it was mentioned, I can't remember who by it or when or what, uh, about pets. Who moving mentioned pets. Pe- yeah, moving yeah. pets. When we move, we have to take our pets with us. Some people don't. Because they're yeah. either idiots or the that sometimes you get the house that comes with the dog, the dog with no teeth and no eyes and no ears, and it'll be cruel for him to move into a new house because he'll keep bumping into the furniture because he he knows where everything is at the moment. Um, my one of my aunties uh moved into a house which came with a dog, and I've taken my cat with me as well to the house I'm in at the moment. Um, and we went through that phase of, okay, do we have to put butter on his feet or something? There, there's a myth about <laughs> cats and putting butter on their feet. Oh, I just want to get a cat now and butter it. <laughs> no, honestly, all right, I've heard this because you have to, it's something about them cleaning and licking their hands and then once they're cleaning themselves, they're content and they're happy at home. No, it's Tabasco sauce on the bum hole. I... That's what you're thinking of. Right, okay. <laughs> there's... Okay, there's the something about The cat's bum hole, not yours. Yeah, I, I was thinking that. Yeah, I was thinking, well, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I have heard this myth about putting butter on their feet so they can lick their... It makes them lick themselves and it makes them feel content. Uh, we didn't go down that route, though. We just let let him wander off. And he Isn't is butter fine. extraordinarily bad for cats? Um, I don't Question. know. Question for the chat there. Have you ever killed your cat with butter? Isn't that spread? Margarine? Yeah. I, think I it, can't I believe think it's... it's not butter on my cat's feet. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys ever moved a pet? Yes. I've moved a goldfish. In a, oh. uh, from London to North Derbyshire. Bloody hell. In, I had to sit in the back of the van. I was only 11, holding this gold this tank. And it was a, one of those proper old-school heavy-duty ones as well. Yeah. Um, with no lid or anything like that. <laughs> Just the fish <laughs> slopping around in this thing. It lived for nine years, that fish. It survived the trip. Yeah. Bloody Blimey. hell. In the chat room... Uh, Gareth Thomas has come up with the answer to the cats. He says, with cats, you put butter on them. Uh, uh, they don't like to be dirty, so it stops them from going out and so they can stay home and clean. I don't know yeah. if they... Uh, what do they do, like the ironing as well? Oh, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> do the hoovering. <laughs> I've, I've just got this image in my head now of a cat with butter on its feet. Skidding. <laughs> like Scooby Doo. It can't. Yeah. That's that's why you put the butter on the cat's feet. It's because they can't then move. They're just skidding on the spot. They look like they're running, but they're not actually moving. And by the time all the butter's run out, they can move. Well, they of... always land. They always land on their feet, don't they? So you know, they jump off something, hit the ground, and then their limbs go in all, off in all directions because they've got <laughs> butter on them, <laughs> skidding everywhere. <laughs> well, someone told me, you know, if you drop a piece of toast. It lands butter side up. Down. That's why. That's that, yeah. how you make the perpetual motion machine. Exactly, you strap. Sorry, carry on. Strap it to the back of the cat. Yeah, perpetual motion. Yeah. It will just, just spin. <laughs> that's amazing. Doesn't it? Doesn't work. 
Try it, Elton. Try it. Yeah, Android, okay. It, yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> There's also nothing funnier than a cat trying to escape a, a dog on um, lino or on <laughs> laminated if floor. Its feet. Yeah. Well, oh, have, you, have you ever seen that? Oh, there's plenty of them on YouTube. Cats with cucumbers. Yes. yes. It's so funny. I don't get it. What is it? I it's think so it's a weird. Snake, isn't it? So it... they just they don't know it's there. You hide it behind them, and then they turn and see it. And jump seven feet into the air and disappear. It's so out brilliant! Out of the house. Why? Why a cucumber though? What? Well, you tell us. You're the one buttering your cat's feet. I, no, I didn't <laughs> butter my cat's feet. That's the thing. Um, but... I once taught one of my cats to yawn with his eyes open. <laughs> it's the freakiest thing you'll ever see. If you've got a cat, whenever it yawns, flick its teeth. <laughs> no. Why? <laughs> Because it's the greatest thing in the world. If you if you keep flicking their teeth whenever they yawn, they'll start to keep their eyes open when they yawn. And there's nothing funnier than a cat yawning with its eyes open. It's really funny, especially when you've got the in-laws around because they freak out because a cat sits in front of them and yawns with its eyes open, staring at them. Huntington it's... is on the hell mouth, isn't it? <laughs> it really is. It's, it's weird fantastic. up there. My uh, my missus, uh, she has a, a grandma that lives up that way. And I don't think I'll be visiting ever again. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going anywhere near there. You guys have cats that yawn with their mouths open. Eyes open. Uh, eyes open, sorry. And, um, yeah, other hellish <laughs> predicaments up there. It scares the bejesus out of me. I'm never going there again. <laughs> so... Yeah. But you guys have cats, I take it, from this conversation. <laughs> You've moved them. I used to, in in a previous life, um, with the um, the ex-girlfriend that fucked off to Spain whilst I was in a tent off my face, um, there was a classic thing. Um, I don't, I personally, I don't like cats. She wanted a cat. I said, I don't want a cat. So we compromised and got two. Cats um, are wicked. <laughs> and um, these cats were shit. They were rubbish, and um, we when we moved from the REF place in Witten into Huntingdon, she didn't. The girlfriend didn't consider the fact that we were living near a main road. We we're moving from somewhere that had massive open fields, and I'd fitted a cat flap in the back door so the cats could get in and out, and we had this huge, great field that the cats could go and chase mice and pheasants and god knows what else it to moving into a fairly urban conurbation where we had no fields we had a main road and we had a car park and she didn't she never sort of gave this two thoughts but the the funniest one was getting me to fit a cat flat because the back door in this new house in Huntingdon didn't have a plastic panel it was just a glass a, a fully double glazed glass door or UPVC or whatever they are so to fit a cat flap <laughs> it wasn't a case of me with a power drill knocking the four holes and then getting the jigsaw and cutting the square out we actually had to buy a new back door mm-hmm. panel <laughs> so I let her do everything on this I said look I can't fit it it's glass I'm not doing it. I'll, I'll fuck it up. I'll die. Something will happen. Stupid. So she she actually got it fitted. So to have to move the cats into this new house, to have a cat flat fitted in the back door cost seven hundred pounds. Wow. And I laughed because the cats never le- never worked out which part <laughs> of the window they could go through. <laughs> Were they constantly walking into the door? Yes. <laughs> That's bang. Ow. I can go through this Ow. bit. I can't go through that bit. Why am I bashing my face on the wall? What you know you're supposed what? to do it's is not worth it. you're supposed to smear the cat's face in butter <laughs> so every time it hits the glass, it can see where it's it been. It slides off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. But no, the actual moving... Moving the cats in themselves isn't too bad. Once you can get them in the box, um, it's not too bad. But it's having to keep them indoors for two weeks. Yeah. Because cats are outdoors animals just from the smell of their shit. 
they should live outside. <laughs> so to have them indoors and not let them go out, it drove me mad. Cats have a particular smell about theirs, don't they? Yeah. It's kind of it's a very acidic sort of smell, isn't it? Yeah. I've worked in um places where the the house I I'm working in has had a cat and a litter box for the cat. Oh. I was working on a stair lift once. And to work on these stair lifts, you have to ride up and down them. So I have great fun just going up the stairs and coming down the stairs. <laughs> and I came down on this one once. And at the bottom is where the the uh, um, cat mess was. And Ooh. I came around the corner and it went down the stairs. And there's this cat just proudly looking up at me going, yeah, what? <laughs> and he was doing his business. And then he kicked <laughs> kicked all the back stuff over. And then walked off and turned around, looked at me and went, yeah, good luck with that. And yeah, walked deal, off again. Deal with that. And it stunk. A, a cat that looked at you whilst it was shitting. It, it, it seemed quite pleased I was looking at him. <laughs> That's very rare for a cat. Maybe someone flicked its mouth or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you flick a cat cat's mouth when it's doing a poo, then it just looks at you. I heard if you smother its teeth in butter, <laughs> that makes its shit smell a lot better. Or at least of butter. <laughs> Comes out quicker. It does. <laughs> right, I'm going to tell you about a friend who uh, tried to buy a house recently and was stitched up. Um, he's gone in for this house. It was, it's, what, 20 minutes away from where we live at the moment? And it was on the market for... 700 and something crazy amount it's a beautiful house but absolutely crazy amount um yes on the market for there he's gone in and said he's looked around the house said yep yeah, i want that and put a bid in two hours later there was a bid for a extra eighty thousand pound put onto that price and so now he's in a bidding war and he got a bit suspicious about this. He bid above it again, and then an hour later, it went up again by about five grand. And so he, he got suspicious about this. He looked at the person who he was potentially buying off on Facebook and found out who it was. Uh, then found out from the vendor who was actually uh, putting the bids in and found out that they were friends on Facebook. Oh, wow. Turns out one of his mates was bidding against him to put the price up, and then they were going to split the difference of what they made from that. Fuckers. Yeah. So he went straight to the vendor and said, hang on a minute. Fuck that, I go straight to the police. Well, it, well it's, it's fraud, isn't it? Yeah. So he's gone to the vendors and said, look, you've got to get rid of this. You got to take him off, and so they they struck him off, and they told all the other people around the area, "Don't put this house on because this guy is trying to fleece everyone." So yeah, I, that's the sort of stuff that you've got to watch out for. Oh yeah, arseholes. We, we're like this woman. People are bastards, aren't they? People, see, see, I told you, people are bastards. But it's the the one that's that gets me with buying houses at the moment. This is the bane of my this is a real thing for me is you've got um when you buy a house you have to have a survey done on it mm -hmm. and the bog standard bare minimum legal requirement what you need to have for a mortgage is basically a valuation report and literally the surveyor on behalf of your solicitor will go out look at the house might get out of his car and go yeah that's the house it's worth this amount Bob's your uncle, you've got the mortgage. And that's the bare minimum. Then the next one is your home buyer's report, and that's where they actually go into the house and have a look at stuff, and yeah. do electrical testing or what have you. That's generally what people have done. And then you've got the next step up from that, which is your full you know, building survey, which is where they go in, the, they basically take the place apart and rebuild it for you. Yeah, they see if it's um, subsided uh, or if it's going to subside. Um, yeah, all that sort of stuff. Because so we had something similar on this house where we still, uh, there was asbestos um, uh, guttering all along this house. 
Ooh. And well, someone turned around and said, "Okay, right, you got to get rid of that. If I hadn't had that survey, then that'd yeah. still be up there." Which is the point I'm making now. A lot of people, I think, a lot of vendors selling the houses are relying on people only getting the valuation report because it's really cheap. I think it's only like 300 quid. The home buyer's report is like 550, depending on the size of the house. And then your full building survey is like eight, 900 quid. Yeah. So this house that we, the one in Warboys that we pulled out of because it was basically on the event horizon, um, the vendor has now, because they, we obviously said, look, we're, we're pulling out of the sale because it's a shithole. And the um, the estate agent said to us, oh, well, you know, obviously they're going to have this problem when the next person comes to buy it. Can we have a copy of your survey? And I said, yeah, of course you can, for £500. And they said, well, we're not going to pay that for it. And I said, well, you're not going to have a look at it then, are you? <laughs> and um, and they basically, I, I went back to them and said, look, does the vendor want this or not? Because otherwise I'm going to bin it. And uh, they're like, oh, no, no, they, um, they're not going to. They, they don't feel that they need to. Um, so what they'd like to do is reduce the amount. And I said, well, if I go back to the Halifax and say, yeah, I only need 120 grand now, I said 160, they're going to ask why, and they're not going to give me the mortgage. Yeah. So, no, we're pulling out. So what's happened now is that house has gone back on the market for more than we were going to pay for it. So we, we offered, I think, it was 157 and a half because it was on 160. It's now gone back on the market at 160 grand. So me being deeply cynical and essentially believing people to be arseholes, that vendor is relying on their next purchaser only getting the um, valuation report done. Because they know something's... We've just pulled out because of major stuff. We've not said what, but we said look, the result of our home buy report was not favourable, so we've pulled out. So she knows that the next person that gets this done is going to want to pull out again. So I think, personally, I think they, they're they hoping they're going to get away with it by the next purchaser only getting a valuation report done. Yeah. For legal reasons, I have to say, allegedly. Allegedly, yes. Allegedly. Yes. If this is being played in a courtroom, allegedly, okay? <laughs> but they probably yeah. will get away with it, though. But <laughs> that's, the, that's the annoying thing. There will be somebody who will come along and go, do you know what, I'm going to save them this money. You've just undone all that allegedly good work. Damn you. I mean, if <laughs> allegedly there will be someone that, that may hypothetically come along, yeah, I, I I can't see why they wouldn't. Look at the peop How many people would actually look at the price of these um, surveys that you have to go get done? They're extortionate. They are. They're not cheap. I mean, they've come down in price because I offered on a place. No, before I bought my current flat, I found this amazing flat. It was absolutely gorgeous. It was brand new, all done out. Um, had a, it was had like a big uh, roof terrace that you go out onto. It was absolutely gorgeous. And you had this spiral staircase that you went up to to get into the flat. Big sort of patio doors and all the rest of it. And I thought it's all brand new. It all looks lovely. I'll get the home buy. I'll get the just get the valuation report. Oh, no, I'll fork out and I'll get the home buyer's report as well. And it's a good job I did because I found out that the roof terrace didn't actually belong to the flat, neither did the sole access point. Oh. So it's always worth getting the home buyer's report done because <laughs> you find out these little things. When you say sole access point... The sole access point to the flat was this spiral staircase on the side of the building. Right, OK. And um, so you had... So you had to go up the spiral staircase and cross this roof terrace, neither of which belonged to the flat I was buying. So, they... so, unless, so unless I invested in a rope ladder out of the bedroom window, there was no way I could get into it, so I pulled out of that flat. But yeah. I lost 700 quid. But they, they that... could potentially block up that e uh, exit and entrance. One noisy party on my roof terrace, and that's it. Yeah. And let's face it, <laughs> you know, I'm I'm not going to tiptoe around like a church mouse. You know, there are there is going to be noisy parties and barbecues on that roof, so I yeah. pulled out. But I lost seven hundred quid on the home buyer's report. Blimey. 
But it's worth it, though, mate. It's, it it, it the, sounds crazy, but it's worth it. It's, it's kind of worth it. I mean, just to find out, ooh, yeah. Because in the end, I mean, I could have bought that flat, had a noisy barbecue, and then the people downstairs go, right, well, that's actually our roof. You're not allowed on it anymore. And that's me scuppered. I can't get into my own flat. Yeah. <laughs> See, Lee... <laughs> Hello. Do you own your flat at the moment, or you're no, renting? No, no, no. I've, I've, I've always been renting. Yeah. Are you looking to actually buy? Um, I'd Have love we to. Put you off? I'd love to. <laughs> um, I would love to, but it's it's not that kind of um, you know things are a bit a bit hard at the moment in terms of buying places. Yeah. Um, it's not the easy, amount no. of money that you have to to put together, and because it's just me as well. Um. My plan at the moment is to find someone who already owns a house. Ah, that's, that's the cheapest way. <laughs> that's yeah, that's actually not a bad way of doing it. The, the opposite of it. You're looking for a cougar. Absolutely, but no, not necessarily. I don't care either way. <laughs> well, Ford Cougar. Yes, that's the one. <laughs> I'm going to live in that. <laughs> uh, but I would love to own a house, um, but it's just not happening currently but it is quite it's quite weird with how the housing market's gone because the other reason for wanting to sell my flat now is i bought it eight years ago literally the week before the housing crash and i paid 95 yeah 95 grand i paid for this the following week after i completed it was worth 42 but if you stay in that I know, I know your your crash. You're paying interest on something that isn't there, then, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, the reason we're selling up now is because it's finally worth a little bit more than I paid for it. Yeah, see, <laughs> we got lucky when we were buying. I saved up. I managed to save up ten thousand pounds before we moved in, uh, and that went on our deposit for everything. We yeah. bought a house for eighty six and a half thousand pounds. That was a terrace, mid terrace house in Plumstead. Uh, funny enough, around the corner from Mister Darren Barno. Um, hey. Yeah, uh, is that why it was so cheap? It was very cheap. Yes. <laughs> no, he didn't live there at the at the time, um, which is weird. Paths crossing and stuff like that. But when we came to sell, which was that be how many years later would that be? be five six years later i suppose we sold it we were told to put it on the market for 165 and that that way we could guarantee a sale straight away and i said nah put it for 175 i was being a bit not greedy just a bit cheeky and we got a sale within maybe a month of 172 that's not bad then bought this house that we live in, which was less than what we'd sold our terraced house for. So we, it's not that we made money. that All that money that we did make just went on stamp duty and everything. It paid for all the fees to get yeah. ourselves into the house and keep the same mortgage. Well, most of Europe doesn't do this whole home ownership thing. It's all about no, renting. They don't. Renting is normal. It's, it just does, and the government's still trying to push that. Um, I don't really know why, because re people who rent are getting absolutely stitched up. I mean, London is an absolute nightmare. Yeah. We paid um, the very first flat I moved into when I moved back to London uh, fairly recently, about seven years ago now, cost me a thousand pounds a month. A month. Whoa! For, for a one bedroom flat um, without any bills included. Jesus. This this was the woman who wanted to charge me for the light bulbs. It's <laughs> like, no, you, you're fine. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, and yeah, that was six or seven years ago. When I left, we were paying eight hundred pounds for one room in a shared house um, in Deptford. Jesus. Yeah. It was. It wasn't even like a really decent part of London. Um, when we moved to Southampton, we were paying seven hundred and fifty pounds for the entire flat. All bills and everything included, and it's that's isn't that far away. Um, so, it's, something needs to change because, particularly in London, you just can't live there. 
No, you can't. You you need to inherit something. Yeah. And if, if you're young, you can't do it. No. And it's going to be soon, the mortgages are going to be passed on to the, the and, kids. And your kids will be living with you forever. Yeah, yeah, looking forward to that. <laughs> In the late 90s, Amanda was working not as an estate agent, but like a letting agency. And she was working around uh, Blackheath, which is a, a very well-to-do place. Yes. And she said, bearing in mind this was the late 90s, she was putting houses out, rental, for people coming over for over overseas students for over £2,500 per calendar month. <laughs> Fucking hell. And it was a case of, yeah, we'll have it. Thank you very much. Goodbye. You know, daddy's paying Bloody for everything. Hell. Yeah. Were they Saudi, a lot of these? I don't know. I, I really don't know. A lot of Russian oligarchs. I imagine that a lot of Russian oil is involved in this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Well, I work, for, I work for the Ordnance Survey, and part of our job is obviously to keep the maps updated. I think find that you know that's one of our main jobs. I'd like to but, think so. Yeah. Actually, exactly. <laughs> I see, don't, don't print one off, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. <laughs> this was um, fine in the fifties. I think you'll find it stands <laughs> today. We do. We do a lot more. Anyway, the point is, <laughs> one one of the councils. I won't. I won't mention which. We have to. Re- we had to record any building which was eight eight square meters. Was the or or larger basically? That was the smallest build. If it was eight square meters, then it had to go down on the map, because, and this was it was a London borough. They wanted to know where all these outbuildings were because people were renting them as houses. <laughs> yeah. So Bloody so we go. Hell. So we had to record all that stuff. I mean, if you if you search for you know, London rentals nightmare. I I saw one once. They were advertising. It was a shed. Inside the front room, with a mattress on the floor, so you know people would be sat watching TV. And you could say, oh, "I'm going to bed now." Go into your shed, Jesus, <laughs> and you'd just be sleeping there. It was on the in Indy 100, which is not a motor race; it's a website. Bloody hell! Don't worry, I got that. Don't worry. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's it's just ridiculous. So would that be like, um, what are they called, granny annex or something? It was a shed. Just sheds. I'm gonna well, find... like a literal wooden shed? Yeah, talk amongst yourselves. I'm going to find this now. That's insane. A wooden shed. in Like where you'd have a porn stash and go and smoke a pipe. Yeah. Y- yeah, I suppose, yeah. That's insane. Is that what you do? You go to your shed, get your porn out and smoke a pipe? Oh, yeah. Awesome. Smoking jacket and everything, yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just out, down the garden, dear. <laughs> <laughs> right, I've put the link up on in the chat room now. Okay. To right. the story. London, uh, £480 a month for a bed in a shed in the lounge. <laughs> My God, there is an actual shed in their front room. Is it like a cut price sex box, like on Channel Four? <laughs> I love the way it's got blacked out windows. That's amazing. <laughs> That's incredible. In Bethnal Green, which I'm not sure is even one of the best parts of London, anyway. Uh, it's not the greatest. It's not not bad, isn't it? Okay. Four hundred eighty pound plus bills. Surely you'd be able to siphon off um, Wi-Fi from there. <laughs> Got your own password. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not a separate house. It's just technically a separate bedroom. That's so, insane. So that is just classed as a bedroom, then, is it? I guess so. I can't. I can't see this because I'm not in the mixer chat. Is it in the middle of the room? Um, it's in the corner, and there's a the sofa is propped up against it. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what's That's really magic. bugging about? Because it, it's got a, um, a slanted roof, a pitched roof, sorry. It's got a pitched roof. Yeah, and it, it ever so slightly comes over the window. It's really bugging me. I wish they'd just cut that bit off. Make it flush. I'd have shed like that once. 
<laughs> That's crazy. Uh, Why would you do that? And right, okay, their coffee table. <laughs> their coffee table. This is how cheap they are, right? They got a shed in their room for another room. Uh, they got horrible sofa, and also the coffee table is made out of a cable barrel. You know what a cable a yeah, mains yeah, cable yeah. would come on. That's... Cheeky. Could you put the cable? Could you put the coffee table in front of the shed on uh, the shed door if they pissed you off? Of course you could. <laughs> <laughs> I love it how it's painted white, so you won't notice. Oh, fucking hell! <laughs> Just blends into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if you had your girlfriend round or something while the rest of your house is in, <laughs> sat in the front room? <laughs> we're, we're just taking this back to the uh, boudoir. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> and then three minutes later, you come back out again. <laughs> <laughs> three uh, minutes, fucking show off. No, you've obviously heard. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to tell you a little horror story that... Um, I had on my ventures while we were buying our house in Plumstead. The guy we were buying it off with the smelly dog, he wanted to move out. Um, and we bought the house and everything was going tickety-boo. And then around it, maybe a year after we uh, bought the house and moved in and got everything nice and tidy, uh, we were speaking to a couple of the neighbours. Because the neighbours were really good. That's... Something else that was brought up in the chat room about uh, horrible neighbours making you move. So we might touch on that in a minute. But uh, we were talking to one of our neighbours. And he said, uh, yeah, y you do know why he wanted to move and why he wanted to sell that house to you. And we're like, oh, no. no, why is this? He said, well, he's, um, we, don't, we don't know how to put it, but it was a well-known case. Um his sister was murdered. Oh, no. uh, okay. Not in our house. No, no, no. Not in your house. Don't worry. Not in your house. I think they'd have to declare that. Surely they'd have to declare that if there were a, a you'd, murder. You'd in find house. out because, you know, candlesticks would start floating around and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the home buyer's report. Body behind the <laughs> cavity Ghost. wall insulating. Yeah. <laughs> Spirits. Yeah. Do you want these blood stains? No, take them with you. Oh, okay, fine. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, we were talking about it. He said, "Yeah, his, his uh, sister was murdered." Okay. So what happened with that? I said, "His sister's body was found on Plumstead Common, which at the time was a five-minute walk up the road." Okay. So she was killed. Yeah. Not all of her body was found there. <laughs> ah, okay. okay. This is where you should just stop asking questions and leave it alone. No, no. How... This is where I start asking questions. <laughs> I'm, I'm very intrigued. How new was the patio? Oh, <laughs> luckily enough, we didn't have a patio. So, um, we asked, you know, continued asking him what was going on, and he said, "Yeah, um, she had no head, and the head." was found in the next road along in someone's oven. Someone in the next road along, just round the corner in Flaxton Road, uh, someone had killed her and taken her head and put it in the oven. It was found in the oven. He was roasting her head. Ooh. So that is why he wanted to move away. That's weird. I should that's have not, a, that's not, a legit reason for moving. It is. Yeah. And I should have got a bit more money off, really. I could have, you know, niggled him down a little bit more. <laughs> but yeah, that was that's like you say, it is a legit reason for moving. And some people would pay more for that, though. But, <laughs> but really, like, it's, there was a head found in the oven. I'm moving here. It's it's not to do with my house. It's he's related to the person whose head was found in a house down the road. So he he didn't kill her. No. He just wanted to be away from the memories of where her body was found. Yeah, because they both lived around that area. Ah. Mm. Still weird. It is a bit weird, yeah. <laughs> where was that again? In Plumstead, Flaxton Road. 
Uh, they do. Are. They do say Plumstead is the Huntingdon of the South, though. Don't they? <laughs> it's not that bad, mate. It's not that <laughs> bad. <laughs> I know you. Yeah, have heads in ovens, but you know it's not that bad. <laughs> well, it's like the one that always gets me is, um, you know, uh, Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails. Right. He he claims he didn't realise, but he bought a house in Hollywood in the mid nineties. And all got it all sorted and all the rest of it. And then people started showing up on the lawn and taking photos of it. And Nine Inch Nails were a fairly big band then, but they weren't that big. And it turned out that it was Roman Polanski's old house, uh... where Sharon Tate was murdered on the front lawn by Charles Manson's lot. Oh, bloody hell. So there was all these people doing this pilgrimage. Well, not pilgrimage. But, you know, <laughs> oh, this is, where, this is where it happened. And he's like, get the fuck off my lawn. And... <laughs> yeah, so he bought the house that Sharon Tate was murdered at. Whether or not he did know or not, but the, the story goes he didn't. But let's face it, it's Trent Reznor. He probably did know. I wonder how many houses have actually had murders in them, or, or some like really horrific thing. Mm. There must be more than you think. Oh yeah, there must be loads. Because I know the current, the previous occupier of, the, of where I am now died in the flat. Right. Because otherwise, how would Derek Akora have a career? He hasn't got a career. He's a charlatan. <laughs> and don't you dare say allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> May the court submit that I did not say allegedly. Because he is a fraud. <laughs> Been proven. But he's continuing. Bless his little heart. No, don't bless his little heart. Stab it. And his hair dye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. How how many people were dead in the house? See, that one makes me wonder about my got, house. We've got quite a lot of old houses in this country as well. Yeah, a huge amount. So many people must have died. My. Oh, that's creepy. I wonder. The I wonder uh, in a room of the dead right now. The terraced house that I. Bought in Plumstead. That was a nineteen oh nine build. Yeah. Maybe no. It was it was a hundred years old when we moved in, so it must have been nineteen oh three or nineteen oh two. So yeah, they are pretty old. So you you do have to wonder what has come before. It's quite cool though. I do like it. I guess so. Yeah. All the stories and all the things that must have happened in, in every single house as well. And it's going to be logged somewhere as well. Yeah. Well, even more so these days, you know, in a hundred years' time from now, are you going to know everything about everywhere because of the internet? Yeah, curse the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we know a little bit too much. <laughs> Any horror stories from you guys? No straight up horror stories, no. But it, it's the the block of flats I'm in at the moment is quite amusing because it's it it was an over fifty five retirement block, but they didn't think to put in the lease that when your parents or whoever who were living here died, you had to then sell it to another over fifty five. Oh. So you had when they first did it had all the sort of really elderly infirm people on the ground floor, the kind of doddery old fools on the first floor and then the sprightly youngsters you know your silver foxes on the top floor but what then started to happen is obviously all the people on the ground floor who were really elderly and infirm died first so you had this really bizarre situation (laughs) and it makes me laugh now but it's quite silly really where you had young people like myself all on the ground floor and then old farts in Zimmer frames and <laughs> shopping trolleys on the top two floors. And it always just made me laugh that all the, some of the young fit people on the on the ground floor and then the elderly and infirm above them. Especially when you when you sent the lift up to the second floor and kept the door open so that it wouldn't go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you cruel bastard. <laughs> It does it happen a... on uh, sheltered accommodation, though, as well. I've been into a few of them, and there's, it, it ne- it's never um, plain and simple the way they 
either design the building or house the people that are going into that building. That they don't make the lift big enough to take the shopping cart. Well, not the, sh- the mobility scooter. Yeah, or the um, the coffin that has to take them out as well. <laughs> oh God! Well, that's you easy. You can stand that's... it on end. I was going to say yeah. stand it on the end. <laughs> Just make sure somebody holds the uh, lid on. Well, that's why you don't have coffin boxes in lifts in tower blocks anymore. Because people were hiding in the coffin boxes and then jumping out and mugging people in the lifts. Oh, fuck off, really? <laughs> yeah, honest. Oh, I'm doing that. At, you... no, at no stage in all of human history has anyone, has the lift door opened and there's just been a coffin in there. That has not happened. No, right, okay. It's the... happened in the films, I've not, seen it. No, <laughs> when, when I say coffin box, right, in in these lifts, uh, you'd have your, no, you, the doors are open in front of you and you'd have your empty lift car. On the back panel towards the bottom, about halfway, you'd have uh, a door that came down to the floor. You'd open the two doors there towards you, and then you'd have another two, possibly three foot behind you uh, with a box built onto the back of the lift. That is your coffin box. That is designed so you can open the doors, slide your coffin in, and it fits laying down on the lift. Oh, wow. Why not just have a bigger lift? That is what they build now. (laughs) (laughs) But it was a um, it was it was an add-on. It's like a <laughs> tiny extension is it, for is a it lift. An optional extra. Yeah, it was, and now you just get a big lift. It's a tiny extension that you pay up for the seven hundred pound per calendar month. <laughs> <laughs> an oven in it. <laughs> and pebble dashing inside. But yeah, that is true. Um, now you don't get coffins, uh, coffin boxes on lifts because yeah. people used to. People used to break in, hide in these coffin boxes, and then mug the people in the lift as they're going down. Huh. Spooky. So, when you've moved, how do you move your stuff? Because the last time I moved, about a month ago, it was still a case of a friend's car and four trips. <laughs> inclu- including <laughs> getting a very small sofa into the back. <laughs> That's all. That's the only way to do it, surely. But you guys own houses. You must. You probably. You know. You. You got to the stage where you can keep all of your life and start adding bits onto it. So every time you move, you must need like a massive van now. It's. I, I've always in the past. I've always rented a transit van and done a couple of trips. But this one, because I'm sick and tired of it all and I can't be bothered, I'm actually getting a set of movers in to do all, do it all for me. Are you going to pay them to pack as well? Yep. Because you can do that, can't you? Yep. We're doing that. I can't be asked. I'm you're, going tr- you're going to trust other people with your things. I'm going to follow them and set fire. People them are bastards, wrong. remember? Yeah. But no, I've, I've in the past I've always just rented a transit, which has always been quite funny. Because I always ran me um, girlfriend's father over. That was fun. Because I was had to back up to the house to get the sofa into it, and he was directing me, and I didn't realise he was to directly be on the transit van, which had no rear view. So, he was like, bump, what was that? <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, he never liked me anyway. Fuck him. I've used a van, a rental van. Uh, what else did we use? We actually paid a company to come in and clear the house, pull it in the back of their massive truck, and then we said, right, okay, we'll see you in two hours. We're driving north to Essex on an adventure. And then we saw them and they stuck it all in the house and everything either said loft or spare room on it. Um, Luxury. Yeah, but we did the packing. But when you come to... When I, I went to move, I had to I had to decide to myself, right, okay, there's so much crap up in that loft. I need to sort it. And I gave myself a month before we even started packing, to sort all that stuff out. Because the problem with me, when I go up to my loft, I start sifting through my stuff. And I can be up there an hour. If I go up there to get uh, the Christmas decorations down. Well, I saw. It's just Lego, isn't it? There's a lot of Lego up there, isn't there? Yeah, it's amazing. And a couple of Millennium Falcons and Atats. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Never, Never move, Elton. No, I will not. Um... But I, I can spend an hour or two up there 
I used to uh, read the enemy quite a lot, and oh, I'm yeah. I'm a bit of a hoarder. And sure, I'm it wasn't like, FHM or the uh, no, it was M- the, the Littlewoods catalog. Oh dear. <laughs> Hang on, let, let's have a second to think about the Littlewoods catalog. Oh, there we go. <laughs> right, uh, yeah, I used to read the NME quite a lot. NME, for people who can't understand what I'm saying. Uh, and I used to hoard it, and I had hundreds of copies in my loft, and I used to sit through them, and throwing them out, it's it's not that hard, but then you see something, oh, I might read that again one day. <laughs> and so you end yeah. up creating, definitely throwing out, Maybe throw out, yeah. won't be throwing out, and keeping piles. And I had <laughs> I had to do that a couple of times to then get rid of all the ones I'm definitely thrown out. Okay, they're gone. Now sort it again. And what am I going to throw out out of this? <laughs> and I would do that a couple of times. And it took about yeah. a month to get through all my stuff up there. Absolutely. Like I said, I've moved pretty much once every year at least. And there's still boxes that I've cons- I'm looking at right now. That have stuff in it that I meant to sort like three moves ago. <laughs> but there's also plenty of examples of throwing things out because I think oh, I'll never need that. And then yeah. six months later, where's that thing? Oh, I threw it out. I yeah. got, took it to a charity shop or whatever. Okay, let's set the scene. You've just bought a house or flat or whatever you want. What's the first thing you set up? TV. TV. TV and Xbox. Because <laughs> otherwise, then... otherwise, how are you going to know where to point the rest of your furniture? Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm it's internet, actually. Because that takes the longest. Yeah. Don't, yeah, don't you phone up the internet and say, right, okay, we, we need internet now, thank you very much. And then four months later, if you were BT, you might be lucky. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah, because cause I'm always moving into houses which already have people in them. Don't have that problem. Oh, you wait. Just, just go straight in. And... Oh, yeah, just you wait. If you're dealing with BT, those people are pricks. <laughs> do you not do it Allegedly. before you go? No, no, I think they are. <laughs> no, they are. They definitely are. Yeah. No, you, I, I don't do it before I go because you're walking out of your house and no, then you're you can, walking into you your ring, house. You can ring Sky like the week before and say, I'm moving, or, you know, however long before, and saying, I'm moving on this date. Can you fix everything? Uh, well, they won't go along and draw a new dish on a house that you don't own yet. You need to be in there first. Right. Because yeah. I had that when I moved into this house. I, I did phone up Sky and say, right, okay, we're moving. They said, but you can can you not arrange for them to arrive on the day that you arrive? I tried that. That didn't work. No. No. Bastards. Because you can't guarantee something might go wrong. Something might go wrong. You might get stuck in traffic, or you might be another day out before you move in. So, yeah, something might crop up. So I tried to do that, and they said, "Okay, no, you need to be in there." And then we'll come out. Right. Eh. Lazy bastards. But it's all right for you, renting. It's fine. <laughs> you, you just walk in and, okay, right, what's your Wi-Fi code? Thank you very much. Dip, 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 bang, in. <laughs> there's, pro- there's still two places in Southampton that if I walked past it, my phone would connect <laughs> to the internet. <laughs> there's that lurker again outside. That's it, yeah. What's he doing? <laughs> Right, um, on moving house, is there anything else you'd like to say? Because we, we we're on the home straight now, shall we say. I think solicitors should be made to wear a big plastic dorsal fin. Because they're all sharks. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a quick story for that? Um, relatively quick. We had I had this fantastic... It was, it was a house that we pulled out of because it all fell through. But we were with this branch of solicitors, and I don't know if they were just incompetent or useless, or if they had given us the YTS girl or something. But they charged us per letter at twenty-five quid a letter. Ouch! And I was getting loads and loads of letters about the, the ownership of the tree, and I'm thinking there are no trees on the land because it was, it was a 
it was in Water Beach near Cambridge, and it was a two up, two down, but it had an enormous 150 foot backyard with this great big shed. It was fantastic, really nice. But they were going on and on about the ownership of this tree. And I thought, There's, there is no tree. So I went back out there and I sort of I measured it all up. I thought, well, there isn't a tree. And the only tree I could find on the property that was anywhere near the property was quite a way away, to say the least. I actually, you actually have the house, the front garden, the front wall, pavement, main road, pavement, common ground tree. And that was the only tree in the area. And they were disputing the ownership as to whether it fell onto the land owned by the house. And they kept on writing letters to me to try and confirm it. Oh. And he's like, no, don't be a, don't be stupid. No, they're trying to print their own money there, aren't they? They were. And I actually, I, I actually said, look, I want a fully itemised bill at the end of this because I'm paying for these letters because you're stupid. Think of the trees they had to cut down to write these letters <laughs> about these trees. <laughs> I don't think the process of thinking was involved at any point with those solicitors. They were useless. Absolutely terrible. <laughs> Lee, any other uh, final thoughts on this? Um, I, I, not really. I, I've just thought about my dad, actually, with his neighbours and bamboo shoots. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you're talking about battling with neighbours. Was he in the war and was he tied down? Did they try and grow a bamboo uh, shoot through his back? No, the um once it, once you've got bamboo in the ground, it goes under the fences. It does hideous things. Does it? Apparently. Yeah, it really yeah. does. It does. Yeah, it shoots off and then it'll grow. I, I um, our neighbours had it, and um, they had one bamboo plant, and bamboo started coming up in the middle of our lawn, a good twelve foot away from their plant. It just shoots out and grows up. Yeah, fucks your lawnmower up. What? So it, it can shoot. What, 24 foot across, and then all of a yeah. sudden just decided to, to hang her up, turn in. Yeah, that's exactly what it does. You're joking. No, re- I wish I was. <laughs> yeah, so che- get that checked with your neighbours if you're going to move. Do you have bamboo? Yes or no? Yeah, if you've got bamboo planted anywhere. Yeah. Because that will go. It's like willow trees. They're the same. Oh, they're horrible things, they are. My Is old old neighbour had a weeping willow tree and it always crept over our garden and so one day I went out with a uh, hedge trimmer and just Uh. cut a flat side off of it because it was just (laughs) doing my head in (laughs) and it was perfectly in line with the fence and so legally it was fine I disposed of that rubbish legally I could have chucked it over to her side and she would have had to deal with that Um, needless to say that tree withered away I didn't mean to kill it you killed it I didn't mean to you bastard I didn't mean to I didn't like stick nails in it or anything but you did the fact remains I did yes but I didn't mean to (laughs) it's not even allegedly that tree is dead now yeah it is dead because of me I killed it I did not mean it don't worry I have plenty of other trees in my garden now to make up for that tree (laughs) <laughs> right, I think on that note, I think we'll bring it to a conclusion, if that's all right with you guys. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, do you guys have anything to plug at all? No. Well, I'm on another <laughs> episode of the Shonky Lab. No, you haven't worked that's out on a- yeah. a- any plugs whatsoever. Okay, fine, fair enough. I'm only going to plug the the artwork of Danny Davies again. Oh, I top man. I think his stuff's awesome. And mm. I never... I. I never think to write it down, but you can find him on Facebook. He's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, what I'll do, I'll shove a link to it in our show notes. Definitely go over there and definitely buy as much as you can because it is brilliant stuff. Is it Danny now got the Danny Davies dot com? Um, I could quickly have a look. Hang on a sec. But no, you can find him on Facebook. His stuff's really good, and I'm sure it's all linked to him there. Hang on. Internet's being very slow. Safari can't find this server. Nope. Ah, well, never mind. But yeah, find him on Facebook. Also, um, you'll probably plug him anyway. Um, LSG LSG Media Podcasts. Yeah. They do. Um, they're doing the Game of Thrones uh, run at the moment as well, and that's really good. 
Definitely, yeah. I've been listening to that. That's my port of call for Game of Thrones now. Yeah. And the good thing as well is, I don't know if this is a conscious effort, but they record after it's screened in the UK. Uh, which, yeah, they do, yeah, because it screens I, on Monday, doesn't it? Yeah. Cause when do, now, this is a bit of a bizarre question, completely off topic. When does Game of Thrones actually air on Sky Atlantic in the UK? Uh, it airs it, 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it's available to on the um, internet play thing. What's it called? I, Sky Go, uh, like 3 in the morning. Yeah. Because I've been watching it on Now TV, and it's... Because like, with The Walking Dead, you, walk, you watch live at 9. But Game of Thrones is, is available, as you say, from about two, three in the morning. So I didn't know if that was a, a standard thing now. No, it it shows with the American viewing. So oh, that's really cool. You can yeah. watch it at the same time. Smart. Right. Um, yes. Yeah, so we're in our last minute now. So I'm going to wrap everything up, if that's all right. Uh, please do check out the other podcasts I do, the Black Dog Podcast. Uh, I also do the Grand Prix Podcast, which is also back now. So please go over and check the black dog at uh, blackdog.geekplanetonline.com and grandprixpodcast.com everything else that I'm on you can find on rogue2.com that's the home of everything that I like to do uh, the Mixler links are all over there there's also a Patreon over there now if you want to help us out and do the Patreon I'd be much obliged because I want to do more shows there are more shows in me I have many ideas which I want to stick out there so if you pop along there, help us out, then we can bring out more shows and then maybe take over the world very slowly. One person at a time, shall we say. So we're all off now to smother ourselves in butter to help settle into our houses, I take it. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> That's wonderful. Uh, iTunes reviews are also welcome. Uh, and uh, it just leaves me to say thank you to Lee. Thank you to Pete. No worries. You're very welcome. And... Uh, Please leave quietly. This is a residential area. Um, wow <laughs> it was <laughs> really, it was a horrific i mean the house was lovely it's a really nice place but we got the survey result back and i don't know if you've ever if most people should know this i would imagine but when you get your home buyer's report done it lists everything in the house on a scale of one two and three well right. one is hunky dory you're fine brilliant don't have to bother two is you might want to have a look at this and three is run the fuck away don't even <laughs> bother and this ha- this place, if it wasn't a two, it was a three. Uh, the only place it scored one was the chimney stack because it didn't have one. <laughs> um, <laughs> the key phrase for me was many of the ceiling, many of the roof joists are simply not there, having never been fitted in the first place and wouldn't even have complied with building regulations at the time of building. Wow. Um, the much of the in, inside insulation and felting to the roof has rotted away because the bathroom extractor fan discharges directly into the roof space. Um, evidence of DIY wiring in the electrics on the outside of the property. We just oh for fuck's sake! Um, guttering needs replacing. The asbestos roof in the garage probably needs looking at. You just like oh fucking hell. <laughs> So, yeah, we pulled out of that one. Yeah, I imagine quite quickly as well. But the worst thing was, I mean, looking back at it, I mean, the alarm bells should have gone off because we found out that the the owner currently lives in New York, but her 21-year-old son lives on his own in the property. And first time we went round, we walked in, and I I just thought, thought, what's that smell? Hmm, that's that's an interesting smell. That's, That's quite a familiar smell. And the estate agent looked at me and said, oh, you've smelt it as well. I said, yeah, I was a student. I know what that smell is. Oh. <laughs> and um, 
So I was just like, I love fine. that smell, by the way. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but we, whilst we were looking around the house, the fucker's dealer turned up. Um, <laughs> so that really should have set the alarm bells off. But we were so blinded by this lovely house. It had this lovely lean to it at the back that I could imagine turning into like a barbecue and sort of Hawaiian tiki bar sort of looking place. I, was, I fell in love with it, but no, really not. Um, what but was the, it uh, describing it as? Was, 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 did they use phrases, you know, like unique opportunity? No, they they were like they were actually pretty straight with it. Actually, they weren't too bad until we asked started asking questions because there were a couple of lights that didn't work in the property. Um, it certainly feels like it at the moment. Mm. <laughs> it does feel like it. Yeah, I've how many? Well, okay. How many times have you guys done it? <laughs> um, I, I wrote a list so of, the places, <laughs> of the places that I've lived, and I counted 23 houses. Fucking hell. Um, that's probably not all of them, to be honest. I've certainly moved at least once a year for as long as I can remember. Are you the human equivalent of the littlest hobo? Yes. Wow. Pretty much. Uh, uh, do, shall I read the list of places that I've lived? Yeah, go for it. Right, okay, so I started in London. Which ones of these are student, or were you never right. a student? Uh, well, I'll, I'll, I was a student. I'll tell you when the student place comes. So I lived in London, in Glossop, in Derbyshire, Lancaster, Manchester, Maidstone, then Sheffield, where I was a student, then London again, where I was a student for a little bit of the time, and now I'm in Southampton. Are you on some kind of register? <laughs> and to keep moving <laughs> and that's not including the times when i was working as an archaeologist and i had a way job so i was often going away on the monday coming back on the friday into various parts of the country so, yeah. yeah i've moved once or twice and it's a bloody nightmare yeah i imagine it would be yeah, if, like I said, I am currently sat in a room which has boxes all over the place because I haven't bothered to unpack from the last time that I moved. <laughs> because <laughs> you know, who knows when it will happen again? <laughs> it could be off again next week. But... Well, do we ever finish unpacking though? I think yeah. I've probably got a box of stuff somewhere that I've still not unpacked from the last time I moved. Yeah, I've, I've, I've got stuff that went straight from my loft. Into the moving <laughs> van, and then straight to the Into loft. Into your new loft. Did it, yeah. did, it, did it have loft written on the I box? I think it did, yeah. <laughs> Is it Christmas decorations and a box of spiders? <laughs> <laughs> Dead spiders. Yeah. Generally what lives in lofts. Yeah. <laughs> Collect those, put them in the box. Yeah. Um, oh, we, we've had our first um, answer to the question, the mystical question in the chat room. It's from Doreen, and she has put nine... And 96. Mm. Good, good numbers. Good yeah, numbers. Yeah, yeah. It's a solid start. Hey, have, you, have you got any, Lee? Me? Yeah, uh, any, yeah, any answers? 23. I'm just trying to remember all of them. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'll, I'll write them down. I'll come back to you. Okay, yeah, cool. So, um, yeah, stuff that doesn't actually get unpacked. Uh... Hello everyone, welcome back to Shonky Lab. It is me, Mr. Elton McManus, and I'm here to take you through a journey of moving house. Uh, but I do need two guest producers. Yes, I've brought that back. These are guest producers. Uh, first off, in the left-hand corner, we have Mr. Pete Hammond. Hello. And the other corner, slightly smaller corner, little blue corner, I suppose, is Mr. Lee Harvey. Hello. Hello. You guys all right? Oh, yeah, not too bad, man. How's you? Yeah, not too bad. Well, you, you kind of know how I've been feeling because Skype was 
being a bit of a twonk earlier well, on. Well, we've so. had 20 minutes of bollocks, haven't we? So. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best bit. I hope you press record. <laughs> Pretty much, yes. It was um, 20 minutes of, indeed, bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Shame. Um, yeah, but we're we're here to talk about moving house now. I know um, I'm going to put a question in the chat room. This is either going to work wonderfully well, or it's not going to work at all. So I'm a little bit worried about this. Um, but I'm going to ask a question in the chat room. Chat room, are going to answer it, but we're not going to give away the actual question onto the podcast. Meta? I don't Ooh. know. I, I I never met her anyway. Um, right, it's in there, okay? So I'm looking forward to people answering that and then us reading it out and then seeing how we go with this. You never know. Um, if you want to, if you're well, you're probably not listening live anyway, um, if you are listening to the podcast and you want to listen live in future, you go over to uh, shonkylab.com and the links are all there to go to the Mixler page. There you can join us in the chat room, talk with us, uh, chat with us, even call in on Skype as well if you wish to do that. So, so gentlemen, moving house. Yes, yeah, fun yeah. times. Yeah, it's, it's, it's apparently it's the most stressful thing you can do, isn't it? Yeah, I did have a box that just said loft in it. Uh, <laughs> that did just go straight to the loft. Is, and, it, is it a loft? Is it like a smaller loft? And in that is a box with a smaller loft. And it just goes on forever. Infinitum. That's the one. Of lofts. Like the the inception of loft rooms. Yes. Crazy. No, actually, no. Funny enough, no. <laughs> but I once lived with um, a load of film students, and they were thinking about making a film called Loft, which was like Lost, but except they, they were trapped in a loft instead of on an island. Ah. I don't know what ever happened to that. I I take it it <laughs> never saw the light of day. And it, uh, it sounded interesting. <laughs> okay, well, um, mysterious loft full of um, what do they call polar bears and smoke monsters? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go down this rabbit hole. Let's open the hatch. Oh <laughs> fuck! We're in somebody's living room. <laughs> Pete, you're in the process of trying to find a house at the moment, aren't you? I am indeed. Yes. I think this this is the basic premise of doing this one, wasn't it? Yeah. The, the fun and games and jolly japes of actually moving house and looking for somewhere. Um, yes. Yeah, we're currently part way through. We're actually, we've just had the survey results back on um, the place we, we're currently looking at buying. And um, as you can possibly tell by the tone of voice, I'm not very happy about it <laughs> already. So uh, it's going really well. Yeah. I... Well, like Lee said, it is one of the stressful, most st- the stressful things you can do throughout your whole life. Yeah, um, I mean this this one it's it's not so much the actual moving and all the rest of it. It's the it's the fact that people turn into lying bastards when they're trying to sell their house. Would that um, be the estate agents or the actual people that are selling the house though? Both, both generally speaking. <laughs> Uh, this one, we actually met the woman who's selling the place, and we um, said, so, or, "Or is everything in order?" And she goes, "Oh yes, this boy, this boiler was fitted three years ago, and I've got all the certificates for it. It's all in order, and this, that, and the other." And we got the survey results back today, and it said, "Yeah, no evidence of any safety certificates or whatsoever for electrics, the gas, nothing." And we're just, "Oh, for fuck's sake!" Oh, nice. This this is coming off the back of the previous place that we offered on. Um, we got the survey results back on that, and essentially, the bits that weren't under water were on fire. And um, if we moved in, we both were caught. And I said to the, because we looked at the house twice. Um, I said, "Are these? Is it just because the light bulbs are gone, or is it the electrics?" And I said, "Oh no, no, no! It's the bulbs. It's the bulbs." And you come back on the survey. Actually, no, don't turn any of these lights on. They're wired and pro- wired and funny, and yeah, they're outside as well. So. Wow. It, was, it was a little bit kind of mm. like a, a kind of you know 
that game operation where you've got to try and remove bits. At any stage, <laughs> you could press the light bulb and something will explode and yeah, things will go off. open. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually like Buckaroo. Yeah, touch something and something will fly off or fall down. <laughs> that, that house, I mean, I'm surprised it's still standing, quite frankly. But I think the entire row, because it's a mid-terrace, I think the entire row are all the same. So they're just holding each other up by I was a sound. Of say, it. If it's in the mid terrace, you're all right. It's the ones that yeah. you want to worry about. But no, that's, that really wasn't good. But then I think I'm cursed when it comes to buying houses. Because um, way back when, when I bought my very first house back in, ooh, where are we? 2000 and, I think it's 2001. Um, me and the girlfriend at the time, we were renting a place in Cambridge and we thought, well, we want to move, we want to buy our own place, but we can't really afford it. And, um, she was looking through the you know local papers and whatever, and found out that they were doing a mass sale of houses um, at REF Witten. Oh yeah. Um, and basically, this housing company called Annington bought 120 X MOD houses on on the REF base. Oh, nice. And they were selling them at frankly ridiculously low prices. Um, so we went along to the sales office on you know on the civilian part of the base and we said look you know we're, we're interested we'd like to register our interest and what's what's the process they said well it's an auction there's 120 houses uh, of these 120 60 are earmarked for xmod personnel so places one to 60 in the queue are sort of reserved and then after that anybody can can join the queue and we're like oh right what what, what you, so you mean the queue so on the day you come up and you literally stand in line and you, when it comes your turn, you can kind of have a look at the houses. They said, well, essentially, yes, but we advise you to start queuing fairly early. Oh, right, okay, how early is early? And the woman said, yesterday. And I said, what? You know, the, the sale's not for another two weeks yet, love. What, what do you mean? She goes, yeah, we're unofficially, we are allowing people to camp. And they'd started camping to get these houses. What, for, like, when people camp for our iPhones? <laughs> 